Hello and welcome again to another video on number theory. So today's video is checking for divisibility. So basically what this is about is given two integers, you want to check whether or not one divides the other. There are several criterions for divisibility, so we will talk about a couple of them in this video. Now before I go into the checking for divisibility, the criterions we're going to see in this video, let's check the definition again of divisibility. So suppose you have two integers a and b, a not equal to zero. So we're gonna say that a divides d, which was, remember we are using uh, this notation here, that's equivalent to say that there is an integer k, so that b is equal to k times a. So basically b is a multiple of a, if you have that a divides b. So that's the definition. Now, if you look at this definition right here, we can rewrite the definition uh, of divisibility by if you divide by a on both sides, so we'll have b over a equals to k. There's, there's another alternative definition for divisibility. And we can say that a divides b, that is equivalent to this uh, quotient b over a is just an integer. So whenever b over a is an integer, we're going to say that a divides b. That's probably the one that you're more familiar with if you didn't take any number theory classes. Uh, so that is if a divides b, if this b over a is an integer. Now, checking if a divides b is equivalent to check that this is an integer. Now, is that something uh, that entirely can be done using a calculator or a computer? So let's ask the question, is this problem easily solved by a calculator. So let's let's look at into that. Let's see if that is all we need. So let's do an experiment. Suppose you have a, this uh, a calculator, TI Inspire Texas Instrument Calculator, which is a decent calculator by today's standards. Let's say you have that calculator or you have another calculator you want to use for this experiment. So if you have one now, maybe you can get, get it and then do this experiment uh, with me. So let's say we're going to determine this. We're going to determine if the number 3 divides b, and b is an integer that I'm going to give you right here. So this is the integer. Suppose you have your calculator, and then suppose that now you're going to start inputting input this number into your calculator. How long do you think it's going to take you? Uh, probably not a uh, short time. Now, in and one more thing, did you notice that there is a one right here? Now, I'm going to make a point about all of this in a second. So you have your calculator. If you want to enter this into your calculator, it, it might not be the best uh, way to check for the visibility here. Now, there's one problem with this calculator in particular, in this particular example, and it's the following problem. If you look at the manual of this calculator in page 14, it reads something like this. So I took a screenshot of this uh, manual in page 14. Now, if you read what it says here, uh, there's a lot of things that says there, but basically what it means is the largest number that you can enter in this calculator is a six bit binary uh, form. It's the largest that you can enter. Otherwise, the calculator is going to represent it in another way. What that means is if you enter the number that I just told you, the calculator is going to put that in memory, but not exactly that number. So it's not going to help you to decide whether 3 divides that number because that number is too big for this calculator. Now, how about uh, something a little bit bigger? Now, the largest integer that can be represented in this calculator is 2 to the 6, 3 minus 1, which is this number right here. So this is the largest integer that can be represented entirely in this calculator. So that's a 64-bit integer. So how about an online calculator? Well, that would be no problem, because if you use, for example, Wolfram Alpha, and that will allow you to type all that big number. So in that particular case, you could do it. Now, if you type that number, you have the patience to type all that number. So it would be, you can check for the visibility by using this command. So you type the number here, 
and they say mod, M-O-D, three, this is gonna give you the remainder of this number when you divide it by three. As you can see here, it gives me zero. So we know the answer to the question already. The answer to the question is in fact that three divides this number. So three divides this number here. Now, how long did it take you to type the number if you actually stop the video and try to type it? Probably not a short time. So what is the moral of this story? Why did I spend the time talking about this? The moral of the story is this. Using a calculator or computer is not always the best option. I am not saying it's a bad option, and I'm not saying that a calculator or computer should not be used. They should be used in the appropriate cases. But there are some cases in which it is faster to answer the question using properties of the visibility. So sometimes calculators and computers are good to perform certain tasks, and sometimes they are not that good. In this particular case, for example, using the criteria for divisibility by three in particular will be a little faster. So let's come back to the question. And the question is again the same thing. So let's determine that three divides B if B is this number. We know that the question, the answer to the question is yes. Uh, three divides b because we checked it with wolfram alpha but how about we take check this theoretically and you will see that it's a lot easier and faster so the criteria for divisibility by three is this one so if you have an integer and you want to check that three divides that integer if and only if the sum of the digits of b is divisible by three so what i'm saying here is this two statements three divides b and the sum of the digits of b is divisible by three that's equivalent now, I'm assuming all, in all these cases and in this video, everything is in base 10. So when I say digits of B, I mean the digits of B in base 10. So we can check 3 divided B by adding the digits of the number B. And if it's divisible by 3. Now, you can check, you can see here that it's kind of like a circular, maybe, kind of test. But when you add the digits, the addition of the digit is, of course, a lot smaller than the actual number. Uh, usually in this particular case, so it's going to be easier to check by this value by 3 when you add the digits. Let's see in this particular say, case what happens. Now, I have the number that I want to check for the visibility, which is this one right here. I'm going to add the digits. Now, adding the digits in this case, because I have so many zeros, I can basically ignore the zeros because the zeros are not going to add to the sum of the digits. So I don't have to put them there. The only numbers I have to put right down now, right now is two and one. So I'm gonna add the digits two and one, and that gives me three, and that number is of course divisible by three. So that checks that this is divisible by three. This is of course a lot easier than trying to type this whole number in a calculator or a computer and checking for divisibility by using the actual division divided by three. So it's better, it's better to use the criterion in this case. So that was the whole point of the example. Now let's look at another example. Let's practice a little bit more. So let's say you have a number that is like this. This is the number. And let's say we want to check if 3 divides that number. What do we do? We need to add the digits. So we add the digits of B. And as you said, 9 plus 5 plus 6 and so on, all the digits here. And that's going to give us, if you add all of that, it's give you 83. Now, whether or not 3 divides b, it will depend on whether or not this number, 83, is divisible by 3. If you are not sure, you can apply the theorem again. You can apply the theorem as many times as you want to make your number as small as um, you can see that the is divisible by 3. So make it easier for you. So adding 3. In this case, I'm going to add the digits. That's going to give me 11. Now, 11, of course, is not divisible by 3. Or if you are not sure, just add the digits. 1 and 1 it gives you 2. 2 is not divisible by 3. So we can check that 11 is not divisible by 3. That will mean that 3 does not divide B. So 3 does not divide this number. Now, so that's an, another way to check the criteria. Now, one more thing I want to mention is I didn't go over the proof of the criterion, why this works, why 3 divided b is equivalent 
to add in the digits and checking if the add sum is divisible by three. That is a theorem that I'm going to prove later when we have the actual tools to prove it. For now, let's just look at the examples. So the conclusion would be that the three does not divide that number. Now we can improve the theorem a little bit more. You don't actually have to add all the digits. Let's look at the improvement. So this is the criterion of the visibility by three again. It's the same theorem, but a little bit improved. In what sense? In the following sense. So let's suppose you have an integer. You want to check for the visibility. So three divides B if and only if the sum of the digits of B different from zero, three, six, and nine is divisible by three. So those two statements that you see there are equivalent. Now, what does this mean here? When you add the digits, you don't have to add all the digits. Basically, what this is saying is you can ignore the digits 0, 3, 6, and 9. So you don't have to add those. You can take them out of your sum. So you have to, you don't have to add all the digits, just less of them. And in case your number has this, these digits here, 0, 3, 6, and 9. So let's look at an example and see how that works. Suppose we want to determine that 3 divides b, where b is an integer, and is this integer right here. Now, in the original criterion for divisibility by 3, I have to add all the digits. But in the improved version, I only have to add the ones that are not 0, 3, 6, or 9. So every time I see a digit that is like that, I'm just going to delete it from the addition of the numbers. So we're going to add the digits. And we're going to ignore 0, 3, 6, and 9. So how do we do that? Let's put down the number again. So you see here I have uh, these nines here. I can completely ignore those. And every time as I see any of those digits, 0, 3, 6, and 9, I can ignore all of those. So this 6 it goes away, 3, uh, that's those 2, and then so on. Just delete every time you see 0, 3, 6, and 9, delete them from your number because they don't gonna make any difference in the criterion here. So let's do all of that. So we are left with these digits, four, eight, one, two, two, one, one, one. Those are the ones, all of this, the ones that are there are the ones we're gonna add, ignoring zero, three, six, and nine. So if we do that, we're gonna add all of these numbers. And if you do it, you get 146. Now, if you're not sure whether or not this number is divisible by 3, apply the theorem again. So add the digits. So you can apply the theorem again to check the divisible by 3. Now, I don't really have to add the number 6 here because we, I can ignore it. So it would be 1 plus 4. So it'll give me 5. 5 is not divisible by 3. So I know it's not divisible by 3. But if you choose to add the 6, you can still do it. You get 11. 11 is not divisible by 6. So the conclusion again will be that 3 does not divide 6. So as I mentioned before, this is an improved criterion because it allows you to use less digits in case you have the digits 0, 3, 6, and 9. Now, I started with this criterion divisibility by 3 because uh, I wanted to give you the example a little bit more of the calculator. Compare uh, how do you compare the calculator and computer versus the theoretical. As I mentioned, both of them are important and they have the uses. All right, so let's look at divisibility by two. Usually when you take a class in number theory, this is the first criterion that you see because it's the easier to apply. I just started with number three because I wanted to give you the example with the calculator. But this is the one that you usually start with. So what's divisibility by two? This is actually easier to apply. So two divides a number B, we're gonna call that number B even if it is divisible by two. If the last digit of B are zero, two, four, six, and eight. So those two statements are equivalent. And those digits are what we call the even digits. So basically, a number is divisible by two, or is even if the last digit is even. So that's easier to check. We don't have to add anything. You just have to basically look at the number. So let's, let's, let's see this example. So it's two divides b. We're going to determine that, where b is this number. Now this number, um, the only thing we care about is the last digit because that's when I'm going to determine whether 2 divides b. Do I have to make the division, do the division to check if it's divisible by 3? No, I just have to look at the last number. So the last digit is 8, and because 8 is an even digit, then that 2 divides b. 
Now, uh, that's all I have to say for this video. So we're going to talk about other criterions for divisibility uh, in other videos. We started with two and three in the example about the calculator and computer. Again, as I said, calculators and computers are usable in number theory, but theory is also usable. So I wanted to give that, that example and make that point. So thank you for watching. Uh, take care and good luck.